Okay, so this lecture is gonna be talking about the quotient topology, and、uh, the quotient topology is more geometric and harder. Okay, so definition: given two topological spaces in a surjective map from x to y, we say that map is a quotient map if, for any subset U of y, U is open in y equivalent to The inverse image on U is open in X. So we call we see that this direction implies a、uh, Q is continuous, and we establish the equivalence means that Q is a quotient map. So sometimes people call it strong continuity. And since we have、um, this equality, so we can just replace the word open with closed in our definition, right? And、uh, just this definition might not be enough. We just look for other way to describe the quotient map. So we say the subset C of X is saturated if C is equal to、um, the inverse image on Q under U for some U is subset of Y. So a set is saturated if it's equal to some complete inverse image of some some set. Okay. So now we see that Q is a quotient map is equivalent to, ah、uh, sorry, should be, let's see, let me just change it to P, okay. I just can't switch between the P and Qs. Okay, so if it's equal to P is a quotient map if only if it is continuous, it takes open saturated sets to open sets. Right, so P is continuous gives this direction, and for this, right, U is open in Y, it takes open saturated sets to open sets. <laughs> right. Oh wait, um, I think this direction is the continuous function. Condition. I'm very sorry, and for this, uh, right for this, um, so right if a set is saturated, it takes open, right, it takes open saturated sets. It takes open saturated sets to open sets, right. Open saturated to open sets. Why? Because, uh, P is assumed to be surjective, right. So we have. So like Q, which is equal to U, right? Q of this is equal to Q B because Q is surjective, right? Okay. So another definition is called the quotient topology. So we give X a set, A is a X is space and A is a set. Uh, we let P again be the surjective map. Then there exists a unique topology T on A such that. P is a quotient map. So, there exists a topology on A that makes this surjective map into a quotient map, and we call this the quotient topology induced by P. Okay, and we just need to do some verifications. We define U subset A as open if this inverse image is open in X. Right. If we make this definition, right? U and A is open if the inverse image is open in X, right? So. So this means that、uh, P is a quotient map, right? And we also note that the empty sets in the entire space is in the、uh, topology, and by the good property of in preimage, we have those、uh, union intersections, which really shows that. This is a topology, right? Indeed, a topology. Now, if the set A is a partition of X, then we have a projection, right? The natural projection induced by this partition. Then the quotient to induced by P, the quotient topology. This is called the quotient space of X, right? Because we're given the partition of X, and then we can consider this projection. Then this projection map is definitely surjective, and for this map we induce the topology, 
and we call this topology is the quotient space of x. I hope that's clear. And so let's do some remarks. So u is a subset of the partition, then you are a collection of equivalence classes, right? And so if you're a collection of equivalence classes, then the inverse image, the pre-image under u is a set of all x such that the equivalent class is in u, right? set of all points such that the equivalent class of this point is in U. So the open sets in here are the collection of equivalent classes such that the union, the union of the elements in equivalent classes is open in X. Now we relate to subspace. Subspace does not behave really well. And we need some extra conditions on it. So given a quotient map and A is okay, with a subspace of X, and A is saturated. And uh, Q, we restrict the domain and range of P. We right? restrict to A, the subspace, and then we also restrict the range to PA. <laughs> now, we have A is open and closed in X, means that Q is a quotient map. If P is open map or closed map, then Q is a quotient map. Open map or closed map means it takes open sets to open sets. Let me say U open, P U open. Right, this is the really definition of open and closed map. <laughs> so let's just first verify. We will need to verify these two equalities first. So let's just verify the first one. Is that the inverse image of Q under V is the same as the inverse image of, sorry, inverse or P image of P a v under p provided that v is a subset of pa now if v is a subset of pa and a is saturated right v is a subset of pa a is equal to this right is equal to this but this is equal to s because p is surjective so v is a subset of x so if the inverse of v pre image of v is a subset of the pre image of s which is equal to a so this is subset of a right if this is subset of A, right, then these two sets are equal under Q, right? Because if we talk about this, it's really, again, the subset of A, right? If this is subset of A, then just like consider this, talk about this, is no difference between the Q and P's, right? It's like you need to have a picture in your head that, okay, if this is the subset of A, right, if this is a subset of A, right, this is also contained in A, right, so they are equal because Q is defined by restricting the domain and range. Also, if, if it's still like confused, we can just prove this uh, equality, right? So if X is in, say, from the Q first. And if x is in this, means qx is in v contained in pa. If qx is contained in pa, and inverse image of q, and is, this is definitely a um, subset of a, right? If x is contained in a, then qx is equal to px, right? Px is contained in Pa. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Contained in V. Right, so Ps is contained in V, which means that x is in this set. Right, so we have showed this. Now we show this um, from here. If x is in this set, right? If x is in this, contain an A, X is an A, means that Q of X is equal to P of X, right? And this set is by definition in V, right? Because X is in P, pre-image of V. 
So qx is in v means that x is in q inverse v. Right, so we show this direction. And notice the importance here is to show if we have this, if we have this, then x is in a, x is in a, x is in a means that q and p are the same on a. Right, this is the importance of, of this thing here. So we have this. So this is established. Now, to show the second uh, thing, we know that the pre-image behaves well, right? But what about the images, right? The images, well, it is a different story. And now let's take a look. Well, okay. So uh, um, for this one, it's obvious, right? <laughs> this one's obvious because it's like, this is a subset of u and this is a subset of a so okay and for this direction let y equals to p u equals to p a if we're in the intersection right y is in p u and p a and u is in u is in a a is saturated so we have this this means that a is in a right a is in a which means that a is in this which means that P is an S, which means that the pre-image of P and the PA. Uh, P is an S means that this set is a subset of S, right? Which means that this is equal to A. I mean subset of A, right? Subset of A. So this is an A2 because PA, PA is equal to PU. So this is also equal to A. From here, we see that u is in a, right? Uh, this, you just show it by yourself. I can show it, then you can show it, right? So, y is in this, because u is also in a. u is in u, and u is also in a, so y is in this, right? y is a pu, but u is in u, and u is, u is also in a. <laughs> okay, so we have shown these two uh, equalities, now we're gonna verify our proof for the theorem. What is our theorem set? A is open and closed, then Q is a quotient map. If P is open and closed, then P a Q. If A is open and closed, then Q is a quotient map. If P is open and closed map, then Q is a quotient map. So now, let's say if A is open or P is open, and for V subset of PA, assume this is open in A, because we already sh we already have Q as a continuous map, right? Yes, Q is already a continuous map, because P is a quotient map, so quotient map is definitely continuous. And if we restrict the domain, and then we again restrict the codomain, the range or codomain, it is again continuous, right? Because like restrict domain, we apply it first, it is continuous. After that, we again restrict the range, it is again continuous. So this is again continuous. Continuous map between A and PA for an associate topology. Right. So we just need to show, if this is open in A, we want to show that V is open in PA. Right, we want to show that V is open in PA. Okay, so if A is open set in X, in x right we have this a is open in x q is open in a a open in x which means that this set is open in x which means that p inverse v is open in x but here we have p is a quotient map so v is open in y but v is a subset of p a right v is a subset of p a so v is open in p a like from here to here, because V is open in Y, and V is already contained in PA. So V is definitely open in PA, right? Now from two, if P is an open map, then Q inverse V is equal to P inverse V, right? The first, the first equation, equality, not equation, equality um, is open in A, then this is equal to u intersect a, right? 
because this set is open in A, then UA where U is open in X, right? U is open in X. I don't have to verify this. And so V is equal to this because P is surjective. And this P inverse V, we replace with this. And we apply our second equality, right? It's open in PA. And why is this true? Because U is open in X, P is an open map. So this this set is open this set is open in Y, the target space, right? Yes, the target space Y. So this is open in Y. So this set, which is V, is open in PA. So we're done. And uh, for the closed, for the closed you can just look at this and replace the word open with close and we get the rest. Okay. And here's the observation is that the composition of quotient map is again quotient because we have this equality. Okay. And now we're going to focus on the criteria for a map for the function from the quotient outside of quotient space to be continuous. I want to talk about this too. Okay, so a map from the quotient space out of out of the quotient space to some other space. Well, P, so we give it a quotient map, and Z is another space, and G is from X to Z, okay? Such that for each set, for each level set of Y under P, right? P pre-image under the single point Y, G is constant on it. Okay. So here's a diagram. Is that okay? So this is the space X, Y, Z, Z, right? Our space Z. So the condition that for each set this, so for each point Y, right? For each point y, for each point y, the pre-image of it under p, right? The pre-image under p is some set, sorry, is some set, right? Then for this set, g is constant on it. So for this set, g is constant on this set, right? So from here, we can see we can establish a function, a mapping, and it's called f, right? So here's the, the diagram here. <laughs> then, right, G, and indeed, right, this intuition definitely fits. And indeed, G induces a map such that f of p is equal to G and f is continuous or quotient, if only if G is continuous or quotient. So here's like the, the diagram here. The diagram here, right? <laughs> so let's just prove it. Well, because for each point, for each such set, G is one point set, right? So for this Y, we define ZY equals to this, this point, that point, right? And uh, because X is in this set, right? X is in this set, so we know that the set of G of X is equal to this set of this. Right, because um P is a quotient map, right? So P X for this point P X, right? G under this P inverse Y, right? Is a constant, and this X we have G S is equal to, um, the set Y, right? They are the same, and. This is really by definition equal to f of px, right? f of px. And we say that g of x is equal to f of px. So f of p is equal to g, okay? Okay, I think I should remove the curly braces here because, okay, now I think this makes sense because um, this is a set, right? This inside, this thing inside a, G of A is a set, right? 
and uh, because x and this right because px is inside px right so we know that if x is in the set right then g of x is in this set right but right so we have this is a subset of this is a subset of this now conversely because g is constant on this set on this set g is constant right g of this is equal to a single point set say a single point right Yes, so we have gx is a subset of a single point, right? But from here, really shows that gx is equal to the single point, right? Right. Yes, so we really have the equality here, right? And so this equality is done from here because this is a one point set, right? This y is equal to px in our case, right? For this is a one point set, we define fy to be that point, right? So this is a one point set. Again, say one point set, right? And f of px is equal to this point. Right, for this px equal to this point so again the set of this is equal to this so we have this which means that f of p is equal to g right. okay so this is like some some logic and set theory happening so now we want to show this implication if f is continuous quotient and g continuous well this is really easy because the composition Right? This is already given by the composition here because P is a quotient. So this is easy. Right? And we want to show the derived direction. So if G is continuous, uh, we want to show F is continuous. For V open in Z, we know that V is open in Z, so this is open in X. If this is open in X, right, we have this equality. So this set is open in X. Which means that this set, because P is a quotient mass, so this set must be open in Y. So if you open Z, this is open in Y, which means F is continuous. Right? Because F is a map from Y to Z. Now, if G is quotient, then G is surjective. If G is surjective, then F is surjective, because we have this. Right? Let's look at this diagram. If G is surjective, then F must also be surjective. And now we want to show that this implication, right, for a quotient function. This is open, which means that this is open, right? And this set is equal to this, which means that V is open because G is quotient map. Right. So we're done. Okay, so this is some, some discussion on the criteria for a map that maps outside. The quotient math, why? Because a corollary or a theorem, I will call this theorem, is that, well, if this space Y becomes a, a collection, right? So now given G to be subjective continuous map, just let just this be defined, right? And now we define the set Y here becomes S star such that it consists of all the level sets. Right? We see we look at their uh, elements we can see right so we equip this set with a quotient topology and why we can do this we're gonna verify it in our proof so let's just first uh, accept it okay and now our theorem states that G induced uh, induces a bijective map and F is a homeomorphism is equivalent to G being a quotient map and if this set is Hausdorff, then this set is Hausdorff. Hmm. Okay. 
So yeah, here's the proof. So let's just first verify this is indeed a partition. Well, the disjointness is trivial, right? The disjointness, the elements in here, they're, all, they're definitely disjoint, right? And to see, since we have this, then, and we have this, right? So we apply their pre-image, we show that this is indeed a partition of x, right? So we're done, okay? So we're done, it gives a partition, and we know that every partition gives the rise a, a equivalence relation on the set, right? And those are the equivalence classes, and p to be the natural projection map. So we fix z and z, and for any x in here, um, we see that okay, if z is an x, we want to sh we want to because we want to apply the theorem, right? We want to apply the theorem, so we want to show that we want to show that g is constant on each set that looks like this, right? So in, in our case, our y, our y all looks like this, right? Because x is the collection of those, right? X is the collection of the, the y's. The y looks like this, right? So we fix the set z, okay? We fix the set z, and for any x in this point, right? Pre-image of p under this set. Now from here, we see that Px is in this set, right, the, this set. Px is in this set, right? If Px is in this set, which means that by the definition of a projection map, it means that x should be in this, right? This is the projection of equivalence class. So Px is in the, in the equivalence class of this. Right, as in this equivalence class. Right, definition of quotation map is it sends x to the equivalence class that contains x. Right. So x is in in here, right? By the definition. Right. Like if we can want to interpret this differently. We see that px is equal to g negative one z. If this is clear enough, right? Yes. So px is equal to this z, right? Which means that x is in here. X is in this set. So gx is equal to z. So we fix the z for any x in the pre-image p negative one for our y, Hello, right? G of x is constant on it, right? So g is constant on each of those sets, right? G is constant on each of those sets, and we apply our theorem, right? Let's just let our y be look like this, okay? So g of p negative one is a one point seven z, right? Namely z naught. Why? Because this point is y, right? P negative one y. And uh, for any x in this, we have gx is in z, which is the z, right? Right. So which means that g of this set is equal to the z right and right here if it's with z not right g of p negative one of this gives you z not right so we define fy to be the z not right because as i already proved on the last term right because this is a one point set right we define fy equals to that point so G induces a continuous map because G is continuous and subjective subjectivity is follows from the subjectivity of G and the injectivity of F follows from the definition of it because F of Y, F of this gives you this, right? So F of this 
gives you this and f of this gives you this so this really gives you the injectivity right and now if f is homeomorphism the f is homeomorphism is an open map surjective continuous so f is a quotient map right bijective means surjective right open surjective continuous quotient map composition of quotient map quotient map if g is a quotient map then f is a quotient map right This is by the last theorem, the theorem, right, the theorem, the theorem, theorem from above, theorem from above, right. G is quotient and F is quotient. Then F is open map and continuous and uh, bijective and blah, 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 so F is a homeomorphism. And now suppose our space Z is Hausdorff. So suppose our target space is Hausdorff, that implies this space is Hausdorff too, okay? So suppose this space is Hausdorff, then for any two points that are not equal, we want to show that we want to show that this is Hausdorff, right? So any two points not equal, because f is injective, right? They're not equal to z, so because z is Hausdorff, right? Now we have these two are the disjoint neighborhood of z and w, or z and w, so respectively. And this really finishes the proof of this. Okay? So the quotient topology is going to be useful in the future, right, in, in studying geometries. Okay, so this is more like a geometric thing here. Okay, and next class, we're going to talk about something else. Okay, and see you guys next time.